Low, by Charles Hoyfort, Part 2, Chapter 20 S. Whether the time has come, or not, there is something that looks as if it is coming. An editorial in the New York Sun, September 3, 1930. Views of somebody else quoted. The public is being played upon and utterly misled by the dreamery of the rival mathematical astronomers and physicists, not to mention the clerics, who are raising the game of notoriety to a fine art, in rivalry to religious mysticism, a scientific pornography is being developed, and attracts the more because it is mysterious. These are the views of Professor Henry Edward Armstrong, Emeritus Head of the Department of Chemistry, at City and Guilds College, South Kensington, London. This is revolt inside. That is what develops into revolution. Professor Armstrong's accusation of pornography may seem unduly stimulating, but, judging by their lecheries in other respects, one sees that all that astronomers have to do is discover that stars have sex, and they'll have us sneaking to bookstores for salacious pronouncements and determinations upon the latest celestial scandals. This would popularize them, and after anything becomes popular, then what? That the time has come, or is coming, or more of the revolt within, or that, if they cannot continue upon their present pretenses of progress, the astronomers must return from their motionless excursions. A generation ago, they told of inconceivable distances of stars. Then they said that they had, a thousand times, multiplied some of these distances. But, if the inconceivable by multiplied any number of times, it is still the same old inconceivability. If, at the unthinkable, thought stops, but if thought must move somewhere, the astronomers, who cannot go on expansively, will, if they do think, have to think in reductions. If the time has come, there will be a crash in the observatories, with astronomers in a panic selling short on inconceivabilities.